Hi, how's it going? Welcome back to the series. I'm Charles Botenston, founder of Botenston Properties International. We're here at my office behind me. Today we're going to be talking about the pricing strategy. The pricing strategy is kind of important. When I talk to an owner, rarely do the owner and I really agree on the price. And the reason being is every owner feels that their home is special. Theirs is better than another home, slightly bigger, slightly prettier, more lighter, the building is nicer, there's more amenities. It's because you own it and you spent money. You, you're the one that, that purchased it. Like I said, with the mindset, you have to be objective. You have to look at this objectively because this is the only way that you're gonna be able to sell it for top dollar. To be able to put yourself in a buyer's shoes, I always say, hey, let's, let's bring in four or five brokers. They'll just anonymously write down how much they feel the home is worth. We'll take an average and we'll see what it is. Above my number, perfect. It's above your number, perfect. Below, whatever. It's known as a pricing caravan. Obviously, the caravan is mostly in California when the car rolls up and a bunch of brokers walk out. Pretend like you don't live in the home and that you're seeing it for the first time. Walk outside your house, outside of your home, you close the door and then you walk in and you say, okay, if I was actually moving into this home and all of this was removed, how much would I actually spend pay for this space. Number one is comparables. Comparables is the only way. It's not known as an exactable. It's known as a comparable. The best comparables are within the building, then within the area, then within the, the neighborhood. The only way to actually get the best comparables is within your building. Use Street Easy, verify it through Acris. Acris is the state website that everyone has to file their deeds and their, their co-op uh, records with. Ask your neighbors, hey listen, I'm actually looking to put my, my home on the market. What do you think the price is gonna be? You may not agree with the price, but the thing is, you're gonna get feedback. I'm gonna tell you right now, after 17 days, if you don't get offers, you need to reduce the price. And there's three pricing strategies. Above the asking price, there's at the asking price, and there's below the asking price. There's an incredible strategy for all three. Number one, above the asking price. So why would you wanna price it above the, the asking price? You wanna price it above the asking price, which I don't recommend. That's when there's low inventory. There's low inventory, say, in the building or the area, or you have a very unique home. There's a fireplace, pre-World War I. It's a big loft space, it's historic. There's a pool, there's a basketball court, something that's really, really unique about your home. Number two is you price it where it's gonna trade out roughly what it's gonna trade out within one to one and a half to two percent. A million dollar home, you price it at 999 or 9995, and it's gonna trade at right around there. That is the ideal strategy. It's really hard to price it exactly where it's gonna go for. When you price it right at where it's gonna trade at, you're gonna get a huge influx of people. Which brings me to the third one, which is why do you wanna price it below? The market is the market is the market. Now, times that we've intentionally priced it below. We wanted the home to move fast, but number two is we wanted to create a bidding war. I thrive in bidding wars. I'm an amazing negotiator, an amazing consummate salesperson. You combine those two attributes, hopefully you are too, is that you will get someone above what you'd normally get on the second pricing strategy. And the reason being is that you get people emotionally involved, competitive, they want to win. This is New York City. So when you have two competing buyers, you want to just say, well, this person's going to, this person's here, this person's here, and then you just have and then compete against each other if it's two, if it's three, even better if it's four or more. Obviously, then you start getting into, are you financing? What are your terms? I said the market's the market is the market is the market. Say this iPhone was on for $10. It's a brand new, just working iPhone. If this was on the open market and I said $10, it's gonna be bid up. Same thing with real estate. It's just a starting point. It could go down, it could go up, it could go at the price. But either way, I highly, highly, highly recommend going exactly where the home is gonna trade for or just below it. And the reason being is you're gonna get way more people and it's gonna sell faster. It's not gonna sit and you're not gonna have people that say, why isn't this trading? Why isn't anyone buying this? You do not want those questions. You don't wanna be asking that because they'll say, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? Every other home sold in the area except for this one. That's the pricing strategy. Going overpriced, which I don't really recommend unless it's super unique or there's no inventory. At the price, which is where it's gonna trade at, that's gonna be bring a bunch of people at your first open house. Third one, which is go underpriced, get a bidding war. You're gonna get so many people through the open house. You could, you could, <laughs> you just you just sit there and let the offers fly in. I hope this helps. Use Street Easy. Use your neighbors to get the price. Objectively look at your home, not subjectively. If you have any questions, reply to the email. I'm Charles Botenston, founder of Botenston Properties International. Have a fantastic day.